How's it going everyone? College Lefty and in this video I'm going to be explaining how to prepare for this upcoming All-Star Game program. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Now I have already made a few videos talking about some of my predictions for this upcoming All-Star Game program and there are a lot of things that you can be doing right now to help yourself prepare for all of this brand new content. The reason why we have some decisions to make is because of this roster update that's taking place in two days from now. July 15th, we have the last roster update before the All-Star break uh, with AL and NL All-Star team updates, player attributes, downgrades. This is where they do the fielding upgrades, a very significant roster update. With the timing of everything, this actually kind of puts a wrench in some of our opportunities. We don't necessarily know what's going to happen with that roster update but I can almost guarantee that Sandy Alcantara is going to get upgraded. We'll talk about that in a minute. And some of these ideas that I'm going to mention could potentially be affected by whatever they release at the back end of this upcoming All-Star Game program. So keep that in mind as well. Over the last few videos, I've mentioned why I've been investing in these Home Run Derby X players. And mainly the reason for that is because uh, they're only available for a limited time. The developers mentioned that they would be only available for a few days. As long as they do not bring these cards back, these cards are going to skyrocket in price, if I'm correct on some of my predictions. And I really think that this was a great opportunity to make a lot of stubs. If you missed out on this opportunity, that's okay. There are still other opportunities to make stubs with this upcoming roster update, as I mentioned. Right, This will help you prepare for the upcoming program. The more stubs you have going into it, the, the more stubs and more players you'll be able to get, the more you'll be prepared for a potential collection. Uh, but if you don't know what I'm talking about here in this video, I will go ahead and link a video in the comment section down below. It's basically uh, how I use the stub trick to make a lot of stubs. I've made well over a million stubs with this method this year, and I hit on Alec Manoa and Raphael Devers as well as Jazz Chisholm. Uh, but one thing I wanted to mention, right, as we move forward in this video, we have not seen a collection for at, at least a player reward, right? When I say we have not seen a collection for a previous program, I'm talking about for a player, not necessarily a voucher here. We did not have a collect 30, a collect all of the face of the franchise cards, and we did not have a collect all of the future star cards. Of course, they're still releasing those players, but if you take a look at last year's game, they included both an all-star game collection and a home run derby collection. And this collection was a little bit interesting. You were not able to get the Shohei Otani right away. You were able to get the Prince Fielder right away. But they released a few of these home run derby cards over time after the home run derby was over, like it mentions on the updated schedule in MLB The Show 22. This is an opportunity to make a lot of stubs. If you have a few of those Home Run Derby X players, you might consider selling them for a profit before this collection is released because we don't know if they're going to include these All-Star Game cards. We don't know if they're going to even include the Home Run Derby X players in the collection. And we don't know if we're even going to get a collection because we haven't gotten one for a specific program. Over the last two years, we've had a Home Run Derby collection. I believe in MLB The Show 20, we did not have an All-Star Game type of program, an All-Star Game collection. It was separate from the Home Run Derby collection. Last year, they included them both together. Now, I'm not a person who likes to risk my stubs unless I'm buying a player for more than they should be going for to make a debut video because I create content. Uh, and with that being said, I am going to talk about a few tips that might be more long-term investments. If you have a lot of extra stubs, right? There's players on all different paradigms here. There's players that don't have a lot of stubs that are trying to, you know, get collections done. And then there's players that have multi-million uh, amounts of stubs, right? So uh, with that said, let's get back to the Home Run Derby X players. Last year, I locked in an event reward. We didn't get those event rewind packs. That's why I showed that Yohannes Cespedes. Uh, that might be a similar situation to these Home Run Derby X players. If these cards are not released, if they stay true to their word, if these cards are not released again the, throughout the entire year, these might be the only players that do not have a rewind pack, that do not have another way of unlocking them. That is unique. That is going to cause these cards to skyrocket in price. And I've been watching them on the market just since yesterday. These cards have only been unavailable for about 24 hours. And three different things can happen with these cards. They could release the collection 
where they are needed initially in order to unlock one of those players, a home run derby collection, uh, an all-star game card, maybe it's a Takashi card, I'll talk about that later. Another outcome is they could release a few additional home run derby cards in the program as henchmen and that might cause these cards to drop down in price if you don't necessarily need these four home run derby x players even though they were free and people will have them you might not need them therefore it requires their demand to go down so that's why i sold off a few of them because there is a third outcome that could also happen right they could release those packs again we saw that with the face of the franchise packs we saw that with the Takashi packs. We saw that with the cover athlete packs. I know this type of thing is a little bit different, um, but those are just examples, right? Now I want to talk about something different. The Sizzlin' Summer Bosses are a great investment opportunity if you have extra stubs, right? These cards are a little bit more expensive. They're 25 to 30K. Uh, this Fernando Valenzuela is also a good investment. Typically when they release a single card that's not in a pack, a part of these programs, the card will fluctuate in price. We saw that a little bit with Roy Holiday. You had a pretty good opportunity to triple up on your stubs with Roy Holiday if you bought and sold at the correct time. The same type of thing will happen with that Fernando Valenzuela. And we also have to keep in mind that we're going to get a part two to the Takashi collection eventually. So if those packs are not re-released into the All-Star Game program, which I don't think they will be, they will probably be released later on in another program and these Takashi cards significantly changed in price. I know this was a part of a pack, um, but they fluctuated in price once the Babe Ruth collection came out. I am expecting a second part of that Takashi collection. I know it might be a little ways from now, and these other Takashi cards have significantly fluctuated in price. Uh, I know they're different, right? Those um, Ozzy Smith and Eric Gagne cards were in a choice pack. I would expect another choice pack to be released, right? A third Takashi pack and a second part of that collection. And the last thing I wanted to mention is keep an eye out for fluctuation with milestone cards, prime cards, award series cards, especially if there is a home run derby collection that offers a voucher for George Brett. I think the monthly award cards might drop down in price because it seems like when certain things happen to the market, for example, they just had the chase packs in the pack store that caused some of those award series to drop down in price, caused some of the monthly award series cards and other series cards to rise in price. Then they dropped the summer bundle. It caused the cover athlete cards to drop in price and the collections became a little bit cheaper. Uh, with that said, we have a little bit of time to buy certain types of these cards, right? Headliner cards, I would not buy right away. People are doing those mini seasons missions. They're gonna unlock those headliner choice packs. Those cards are gonna drop down in price. You'll have time to get those Battle Royale rewards in Evan Longoria and George Springer, probably before another George Brett type of collection, right? Part two to that collection. You should have some time to get those cards, probably enough time to where they'll be in the rewind pack and drop down in price after some of the market has adjusted to this brand new program. But that's really everything. I just wanted to break that down for you all. I'm probably going to sell a few of my Home Run Derby X players, and I have already, just because I wanted to buy a few Nick Swisher cards. He was the lowest card. Now he's kind of reached the threshold of the other cards. Keep in mind for those players to fluctuate. I want to say Johnny Gomes and uh, who's the other one? Adrian Gonzalez might be the most expensive ones. Uh, because those two cards might have the least amount of value in the pack. People are picking those other ones, or at least they were, and if those packs are re-released, keep an eye out that those cards will probably drop down to quick sale value. I don't know if they'll release them again after uh, a second time, if they were to do that. So I just wanted to finish this off with some miscellaneous tips. I'm trying to help out as many people as I can. If I was able to help you out in some way, please leave a like on the video, subscribe if you are new, and feel free to return to this video once the new program has come out and see if I was correct. I'll be doing that, but until next time, peace out.